Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the City Infrastructure Committee meeting of the 20th of October. I'd like to begin today's meeting by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we are gathered and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Uh, I declare the meeting open at 10 a.m. And I'd like to advise the meeting attendees that this meeting is being audio recorded. I note that councillors Power and Jeremiah have submitted a leave of absence request due to their attendance at the LGAQ conference. Do any other councillors have a leave of absence to declare? There being none, I now move a motion that councillors Power and Jeremiah be granted a leave of absence in accordance with section 5.3 C3 of the Local Government and Committee Meeting Code. Is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Fraser? All those in favour? Carried unanimously for the... We've got it. Um, just for the people listening at home, we're still in our L plates uh, when it comes to uh, the meeting structure and the, the committee secretariat, so please bear with us. Uh, sometimes there's going to be longish sort of pauses. Um, now, I now move to item 4.1, which is uh, the renaming of part of Razorback Road, Jim Boomba. I now refer, refer to item 4.1. Can the Road and Infrastructure Planning Manager, Mr. Kamal Ranawira, please enter the discussions? Uh, before we open the discussion on this item, and before I ask councillors if you have a conflict of interest to declare, I just thought I'd let you know that the uh, developer in this instance is called QM Properties. So it's hard to declare a conflict if you don't know the actual uh, person making the, or the company making the application. So in this instance, it is QM Properties. I understand that's a short time frame in which to look at your records, but uh, can we please indicate if councillors have any conflicts to declare on this issue 4.1? There being none, I now refer to the Road Infrastructure Planning Manager to open public discussion. Mr. Renawira, you may proceed. Okay. Good morning, councillors. Um, this uh, came to us through the development assessment process. Um, a developer wants to rename this road uh, and the Razorback Road goes through the, the developer's footprint. And um, because of that, he wants to uh, re rename some of those uh, sections of that road. Razorback Road goes from Jimboomba to Mandulin. It's a long road, but most of that road from Myrtle down to down south is all unformed, un, uh, unformed road. So uh, there are no properties getting addresses from this road from beyond that point, Myrtle Road point. So the best way to explain this is to go to the page number three uh, where we have put a develop, uh, uh, developer's plan. I don't know whether we can put it up. Is, is that attachment one, please? So if you look at the attachment one, there are the, the developer's footprint is there in the attachment one. And there are two cul-de-sacs, you can see them um, uh, in Weatherly Road, as well as uh, um, um, Markwell Circuit. So that's what the developer is going to build. Um, so because of that, Razorback Road doesn't um, need to be there. So the developer's footprint says that within the development footprint, uh, we need to remove the Razorback Road uh, classification, I mean the road name. So if you go to page number four, which has the proposed road names um, in um, yellow and um, pink. So that's what we are looking to do. Um, so that suffice the developer's uh, proposal. And we had a chat with the, the local councillor as well. The local councillor is happy to go ahead with this road name change. So uh, that's the reason for the recommendation as well. Thank you. Thanks for that. Um, I've just got a quick question, which is if you've got a section of road that's called Razorback Road and then you carve it up into Weatherly and Markwell Circuit and then you have a continuing Razorback Road, is that the way it's going to work? It's the way it appears on the document. That's 
So which part of the Razorback Road? Razorback Road so comes page, down to Myrtle. Page six of the document, um, the application says that Razorback Road is coming in on the left-hand side, then it changes to Weatherly Road, and then you've got Markwell Circuit, and then you've got a continuing unsealed Razorback Road. Is that yeah. going to remain that way, or will it yeah, all change? I don't know whether there was any development that could happen in that area. That's right. Yeah, so, and, and uh, it has access to Mandula Road anyway, yep. so we can rename it at the end, I mean, sometime in the future. There are no developments at the moment there. Yeah, no, thanks very much for that. I just thought if someone was reading it. Oh, sorry, Mr. Acting Director. Um, thank you. Um, I had a look at the road corridor and Razorback is actually a very long unmade portion. Um, there is a section in the centre already which has actually been renamed to Myrtle, which the manager has referred to. So that long unroad section already has a portion in the middle which has been renamed. All the portions which are left at the moment are currently unmade. When the developer goes ahead with these, these will become made sections as well. So having them actually have a reference name which isn't split, as you've indicated, um, would be a far better outcome. So we can expect to see Darren Power Drive soon? I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, are there any other councillors who wish to speak on the issue? There being none. Um, uh, oh, pardon me, Councillor Wilcox. That's all right. Um, I'd like to hear from Councillor Bannon to hear his thoughts on this. Through to Chair. Councillor Bannon. Uh, yeah, come on, the directors come and see me about it. I I'd agree with it. I've, I know the area pretty well. There's no development there. It's, it's an unmanned road. It just makes sense. Uh, I, I agree with it 100%. That's the spirit. Okay, so um, Councillor Bannon, would you like to move a motion? Thank you very much. Do we have a seconder for the motion? Councillor Stemp, all those in favour? That's been carried unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Ranawira. Uh, that marks the end of the Road Infrastructure Planning Manager's report. Is there any general business for Mr. Ranawira? Councillor Raven. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd just like to provide the manager with an update on the, the um, community consultation at Bush Tucker Road. So last week I went down there and spoke to residents and um, the difference that you get from door knocking compared to a letter is that people provided a much broader level of feedback, particularly around um, the property on 6th Avenue not wanting to be on Adderwood and, and having some concerns about traffic safety in the area. So I'll provide those to you so you can bring the report next round, hopefully, and we can, we can move forward from there. There was broad support. Um, for the name changing of the road, but there was an additional person who did object to it beyond the ones that we identified through the feedback. But it was good to talk to the community firsthand and find out how we can improve the area, not just with the road name change, but by improving traffic safety as well. Thanks thank you. Me. Mr. Renawira, do you want to respond to that at all? No, I'll say thank you, but uh, I'll look forward for the feedback and also I will look forward to work with you. No worries. Councillor Bannon, you had some... Uh, through to Chair, Councillor Raven, was that much difference to the, the letterbox drop that went out where the, you know, if you didn't respond, it was a yes or whatever it was? Yeah, so the letterbox had two people objecting if you include the late um, submission. Um, the, when I actually spoke to residents, there was three properties objecting and one of the objections was um, much more detailed than just saying, no, I don't want the road done. They, they, raise a lot of traffic safety issues in the area, which was when I checked with their neighbours, they agreed that those were problems, but they didn't feel it was appropriate to provide that feedback through the through the narrow sort of um, view of, of just renaming the road, which is why it's so valuable to go out and talk to people face to face so you can understand the full picture and, and make decisions in the public interest. If you indulge me, manager, just to when you got the when they said if you do not respond, they take it as, as a yes. Was that what happened with your one? And was that pretty the same as when you spoke to them? Um, yeah, so the, it was a positive bias. So if you didn't respond to the feedback letter, it was assumed you were in support of the name changing of the road. Um, two residents in particular, um, one lost the letter and tried to call TMR to tell them that he didn't want the road changed. The other one um, lost the letter and didn't get a chance to respond before the deadline, so didn't respond at all. Um, and, and it just showed both of those residents had um, English is a second language. So it adds to the complexity when you've got a pretty technical letter that's provided to somebody. And like, uh, spoken English was fantastic, very easy to communicate with him, but he did find it a little bit daunting, which is why I called TMR. Of course, TMR 
had no, under, no record or understanding of a road name change and, and told him to come and talk to us, but he didn't know who to speak to in council because he'd lost the letter. So um, again, it just reinforces why it's so important to have that human contact, that one-on-one -on -one relationship with your residents, and, and that's why it's better that councillors do community consultation rather than staff. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Bannon. Uh, Mr. Rinawira, thank you very much for your attendance here today. Thank you. Um, we're moving on to item 5.1, which is a report into Logan Water Capital Works program performance for the first quarter 2020 2021. Um, before Mr. Goodhue um, takes his seat, um, I just want to let the people at home uh, know that last Friday, uh, Mr. Darrell Ross uh, retired from as, as the acting director of the infrastructure area, and we now have Mr. Darrell Riley acting in that role. So, welcome today, uh, Mr. Riley. Um, his, his first kit off the, the thing was a busy weekend and um, yeah, it's, it's really good to have him on board. Uh, Mr Goodhue, would you like to...? No, right. through, through the Chair, I'll just say um, I'm Mr Goodhue's not here today, I'm Mark Vaughan. So. You're Mark? Mark Vaughan, the there Water go. Partnership Manager at the, for Logan Water. Well, there you go. Such a big location is Logan City Council. <laughs> I don't have a clue who's who. <laughs> OK, so um, I'll... What am I doing? That's right. Um, I'll now refer to item 5.1. Um, do any councillors have a conflict of interest to declare in, in, this, in this item? There being none, Mr Vaughan, please proceed. Thank you, councillor. Um, if we could just load the presentation, please. So I'll take the report as read and I'll, I'll work through the presentation that uh, mirrors the report. Okay, uh, so the purpose of the presentation today is to update the council on how we're tracking with our uh, capital works program for uh, 2021. Uh, as you can see from the raw numbers, we're um, slightly behind. We're ahead in our waterworks and a little bit behind on the wastewater works. So I'm now just gonna run you through some of the key uh, projects that are in delivery. Um, we've got a smart metering program. Um, we've allocated uh, $1.27 million for, for this year. Um, so that, that's underway. We've got a, a number of uh, locations where we are rolling out smart meters and we're uh, assessing the benefits of those uh, as we go. Um, we've got some significant renewal programs here at Logan um, and we've got five different asset classes where we uh, do those renewal programs. Now, what we're highlighting here is our uh, uh, water facility renewals. So the main water facilities that uh, we have at Logan are our reservoirs. Um, and the renewals have been uh, to try and address three things. One is the uh, safety of our staff. Um, very importantly for a water reservoir is the water quality, making sure that the, the quality of our assets um, are, are strong so that we don't have water ingress in or any vermin ingress into the water reservoirs. Um, and the third is site security. Um, these are often uh, up on the top of hills and provide a, a great um, uh, access point for, for vandals or, or people just wanting to, to get up and have a, have a picnic on the top of the reservoir. And we uh, have had some uh, adventurous folk in Logan who have taken the opportunity to do that. So we are trying to address the, those through our security changes, particularly around our stairs. Um, uh, a lot of the councillors um, have visited the Cedar Grove Environmental Centre. Now that project's now now finished. Um, the, the project is operational. Um, the community access uh, areas were open the weekend before last um, and I, that's been one of our flagship projects uh, for the last year or so. Um, Last week we got a, a lot of news coverage around our biosolids bio gasification um, facility. Um, the trial, we did a trial to prove out the technology. That trial has been successful and that trial result was the, um, I suppose, what, what garnered all of that media interest. Um, we're now heading on towards doing the, the full project and that's uh, going to take us about 18 months to do, particularly because we've got some items that are long lead items that we need to purchase from overseas. Um, Andrew Road Wastewater Pump Station, this project is also complete. So Andrew Road um, is in, in Greenbank um, and servicing some new development areas um, there. Uh, you can see 
the, this and the, the next slide I'll show uh, have both got our, our latest sort of intent for our um, pump station design, where our pump stations are at um, prominent locations. We're trying to make them as least industrial looking as we can. So you can notice some of the subtle changes there, there including like the, the use of uh, synthetic grass and the pool fence type fencing arrangement that's around it rather than a big chain mesh fence. So just some type of things we're trying to do to make, um, make them fit more with the uh, new development layouts. Logan Reserve, very similar, um, recently completed as well. Um, East Street Jimboomba, this project has been on the books at Logan Water for about four years at least. Um, it's finally hit, got the development triggers uh, to go. Um, we're about halfway through that project at the moment. Um, Rochelle South Wastewater Storage. Now, um, this project here is a project where we're working with the, the roads team as well. So we've ended up doing some um, culverts un under the road and we've got a, a major wastewater storage uh, in the park there. Um, this is the first part of a um, significant upgrade and there's further work coming again in partnership with roads in the years to come. Um, we're doing a lot of work around our wastewater treatment plants. Um, we've got the four wastewater treatment plants at the moment with uh, Cedar Grove, Jimboomba, Beanley and Logano. Um, this uh, upgrade that you can see here is a dosing facility um, at, at Beanley. That helps us with our, our wet weather performance, making sure that our um, treatment plants um, uh, meet licence in, in all conditions and particularly wet weather is challenging with sewage networks. Um, wastewater renewals, um, these do get a bit of, um, oh well, not a bit, there, there's a lots of uh, community interaction with the wastewater renewals. Um, about 50% of our uh, wastewater renewals are actually in people's backyards where the manhole is actually in a private property and we've got to um, speak to the resident, enter the property and do the work from there. Most of our residents are fantastic and so is our community team that gets on the front foot and um, speaks to people that this is coming up. Uh, but compared to um, water networks, this is pretty um, easy for the customer in that we just, as long as we've got access to the manhole, we, we've, it's very um, unintrusive for them. Uh, you can see there's quite a large figure there, that 9.6 um, million there. Um, there's al also some uh, other works coming in that area. And finally, I'm talking here about the wastewater facilities. Um, this is mainly our sewage pump station. Again, the, the, the drivers for our updating our um, wastewater pump stations is particularly our operator safety and our network reliability. So we've had a big program going through our high risk um, pump stations. Um, we're getting through those and we're now starting to uh, crack into some of the smaller pump stations. Most of the higher value, higher risk pump stations have been done, um, but you can see that uh, what we're trying to do there, there's a switchboard being unloaded. Uh, all of this is to uh, help with that either safety or the, um, the reliability of the service that we provide through our network. So overall, um, we're tracking reasonably well with our capital program. As I, s I said at the start, we're a little bit behind. Uh, we have a significant kick up in the second half of the year. Uh, most of that's to do with some, some bigger projects that are in their final stage of detailed design and they'll be coming on um, uh, coming through and you'll probably hear about them when we come to do our uh, next next update uh, in three months time. So I'm um, happy to take any questions. Thanks very much Mr Vaughan. Councillor Wilcox. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say congratulations on the Cedar Grove Environmental, Environmental Centre opening. Um, I attended with my kids. I'm pretty sure my kids hate the fact that mum takes them to work and it's educational for them um, but they actually did love the fact that they were walking around it and they were finding out what happens with wastewater treatment plants and they got to see the death pool that's how i got them in there i told them all about the death pool um, and that sort of thing but it, it really was good to take them around for such you know the kids in school and that sort of thing um, and the community access areas looked fantastic i would like to see them embellished even more councillor bannon uh, with barbecues and stuff <laughs> because it, it really is like you're sitting at those beautiful tables 
that were started um, in a men's shed in Logan Village and finished at one of my men's sheds in my division and that sort of thing, and they are stunning. Um, but I would love to see barbecues and stuff like that, you know, because the kangaroos sit right next to you when you're sitting there eating. And I took a picnic and I actually sat there with my kids and, and made them eat with me and that sort of thing. And there were plenty of people that attended throughout the day. So, um, yeah, just wanted to congratulate you on that. So, thanks. No, thanks for the feedback. Excellent. Any other councillors have anything to add? No. Yep, that's okay. fine. Pardon me, Councillor Bradley. Apologies. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I want to thank you also for all the work in Prusdale Road, Parkway Road, um, well, Trevelyan Drive used to be in Division 1, it's now in 3, so I do know a bit of history there as well. So, um, can I just clarify, or can you just correct me please? Um, Historically, there have been, in big rain events, um, sewerage going into the creek, unfortunately. Um, mm. with, unfortunately, being an older area of the city, a number of um, pipes go into the sewerage rather than into the, uh, the normal sort of drainage sort of system. And I know Council's done a number of programs over the last few years, um, probably the last three years, I would say. Um, where they've gone around and, and tested for those that are non-compliant. Um, how is that all sitting now? Is, it go, is there a, a, an optimistic sort of future where we won't be seeing sewage in our waterways? Look, the uh, objective of Council is that we contain a one-in-one-year flood event within the sewage network. Um, we're not there everywhere within the council and we do have to make practical decisions around when, when is the investment worth, worth the return as in trying to um, be able to contain those events. Uh, with the particular one we, we just uh, showed at, um, at Rochdale there, that Rochdale wet, South. Yeah, Rochdale, that wet with a storage there um, provides a significant amount of buffer Mm -hmm. um, but there are other works that need to go that complement that. So it, while it will provide a significant improvement, um, we're probably not yet at one in one year um, containment in that area. In other areas uh, around the network, you, you highlighted that it's harder in the older areas. We, we are doing things like the, the wastewater relining does provide some improvement there, but a lot of the um, infiltration into the networks actually comes from um, the house connections. So council's only responsible for, for the main, the property owners are uh, responsible for the connection. Um, you know, logic being that they're, they're the same age. You know, they were laid at the same time, the house and the, you know, they're roughly the same age when the development took place. Um, so while we may be maintaining ours, the property owner may not be maintaining theirs. So um, we are trying to, to reach this one in one year um, containment standard, we've got different levels of performance all over the city. Um, in some areas we do it quite well, in some areas we're, we're looking for improvements and that's why some of these renewals works is going on. Um, part of that is trying to get that improvement. Other times we're, we're trying to get that performance by putting things in like the Sydney storage that was uh, which was just shown. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, so the, the plan work for next, for this financial year, mm -hmm. I think, we went through the budget, mm -hmm. um, that is to address. The, yeah, so, the so the in, there's uh, uh, another part of that project is actually a, a gravity sewer that comes in Woodlands Drive. Um, that is being coordinated with, with the roads team um, because at the same time as we want to put that in, they need to put in a, an even larger stormwater enhancement. Yeah. Um, and it makes no sense to put the community through two levels of disruption to do one wastewater pipe and then a stormwater pipe. So um, we're, we're doing that together with the roads guys. Um, to put you on the spot, you don't know the timing of that. I don't know the timing of that off the top of my head. No, I'm sorry, off the cuff, I don't know the yeah, timing we, of that we, either, but it is certainly work that's imminent for us, it is funded. It's okay, it, I yep. mean, this is divisional, so you don't need to um, elaborate. I just wanted to have that reassurance that it is gonna be yep. um, rectified. Thank you. But if you could follow up later, that'd be okay. great. Thank you. Well, we'll look, Councillor Bradley now. So, are, are there any other questions? Okay, so can I have a mover for motion 5.1, please? Councillor Raven, a seconder. Councillor Bannon, all those in favour, please raise your hands. 
That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr Vaughan, thank you so much. Uh, that marks the end of your, uh, your report. Is there any general business for Mr Vaughan from any other councillors? There being none, um, I'll now move to the next item. Um, I note that due to social distancing restrictions, not all managers or staff could attend today. That being said, does anyone have any general business for the uh, Acting Director of Road and Water Infrastructure, understanding that we will have a section at the end for special business? <laughs> does anyone have anything for Mr. Mr. Riley? Do you have any business for us, Mr. Riley? None, you have none. Okay, so we're just going to deviate a little. As part of our general business uh, information, um, I wanted to raise an item, as does Councillor Wilcox, the first being about local roads. Now, on Saturday the 31st of October, it is Halloween. And whether or not you follow American traditions or not, the young little bunnies in our community love to dress up, and in a COVID environment, there will be a lot of them wandering our streets. Um, as a show of solidarity and a bit of community safety, how about we all get on our front porches and support these kids, cheer them on if they come and knock on your door. Councillor Bannon, if they knock on yours, good on them, it's a long driveway. <laughs> but um, how about we actually get out on our front porches around, you know, 4pm 4, 4 and just actually encourage these kids and make sure that they stay safe when they're walking around our community. Most should be accompanied by an adult, but some won't be. So. That's all I have to say on that. Councillor Wilcox. Thank you. Thank you for your indulgence, Councillor Lane, uh, for allowing me to raise this item. So, ladies of Logan, we aren't just in the month of October, we are actually in the month of Frocktober. Frocktober has been empowering and encouraging and raising awareness for women around Australia for 13 years to frock up in October to raise awareness and funds for the Ovarian Cancer Research Foundation. Participants show their support by wearing their favourite dresses for a day, a week, for the whole month, whatever you choose. And frockers are encouraged to wear their favourite frocks for eight hours and take photos and post them to social media. The eight hour reference is to mark that sadly one Australian woman loses her life to ovarian cancer every eight hours. I wanted to present, provide some information very quickly on ovarian cancer that even I was actually quite shocked to hear about recently. Ovarian cancer is known as the silent killer, as the symptoms associated with the, associated with the disease are vague and easily mistaken for common women's health issues. Ovarian cancer is the leading cause of death of all gynaecological cancers and there is still no vaccine. So girls, you're not vaccinated against ovarian cancer, you're vaccinated against cervical cancer. With each year, there's about 1,800 Australian women diagnosed with ovarian cancer, and they die um, at the average age of 64. Ovarian cancer has a lower survival rate than both breast cancer, which is 91%, and cervical cancer at 74. The five-year survival rate for all women diagnosed with ovarian cancer is only 46%, because it's normally diagnosed so late. Women who are diagnosed in the advanced stages of the disease um, only have about a 29% five-year survival, survival rate. Unlike other cancers, there is no early detection test for ovarian cancer. So to the ladies of Logan, I challenge you to take the eight-hour Frocktober challenge, either for a day, a week, when you're at the office, on the weekend, or just a particular day. But wear your dress with pride and take photos and share on social media with the hashtag Frocktober and raise some much-needed funds. You can either set up your own event, go to the Frocktober website or follow me on Facebook and I'll have some more information up a little bit later on in the day about how to donate and participate in Frocktober. Next Wednesday, the 28th of October, here in council offices, and I have actually had the approval from Silvio to encourage all staff and ladies to participate, especially those of you who are here attending ordinary council next Wednesday. And for those members in the public that come and sit in the gallery, I also encourage you to get involved in the day and wear your favourite frock. My own challenge or pledge is to wear a dress each day it, when I'm in the office, because on Friday I actually have to go and run a park run route, so I won't be wearing a frock to that. Um, so my, my aim is to wear a dress in the office every day till the 31st of October, and my goal is to fundraise $1,000 for the Ovarian Cancer Research Foundation. I will personally contribute $100 to get my Frocktober challenge started. 
So if you would like to donate to my pledge or to Frocktober yourselves, um, I will have the details on my Facebook page later today, or you can Google Frocktober and it will come up. So I'm challenging all the ladies here next Wednesday to dress up in your finest frock and come ready for a, a lovely day in our dresses. Thank you. Thank you, LeCamp. Thank you, Councillor Wilcox. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to frock up now that you've put the challenge out. <laughs> Thanks very much. And I'm not doing heels, but I'll kick in 100 towards that as well. Um, Thank you. Are there any other councillors with any uh, road-based and infrastructure community-based um, general business items? There being none, uh, I thank you all for your attendance and I'll declare the meeting closed at 10.30am. Thank you.